All right, so in this section, we'll be talking about ammonia dosing and what I'm doing for my tank. So for those of you that are here for like the tank update, you can skip ahead. For the rest of y'all, y'all can stick around for this part. So it's kind of odd that we're like, you know, ammonia dosing because a lot of people when you're like cycling your tank, ammonia is the bad guy and you kind of want to get rid of ammonia. But in uh, our case here, we're using ammonia to a beneficial level. So we're dosing ammonia because one, it helps bump up the nitrates, and two, um, apparently corals do have an easier time breaking down ammonia as uh, opposed to uh, nitrates. So I'm not all like scientific, but I did read up a really good article by uh, Randy Holmes. I think I pronounced his name right. Um, he's there on Reef to Reef. Um, he does all the, like the DIY uh, dosing stuff if you wanted to read into that. I'll probably link it down below in the description. But for uh, me today, I'm using ammonia bicarbonate. This, uh, there are two options you can do. Um, I forgot what the first one is, but the second option, which is uh, I think the better option for a lot of folks, is uh, ammonia bicarbonate. So um, here I have like a little simple water bottle um, that you know I labeled just in case I don't want people actually drinking this bottle. So I wrote some stuff on it. Um, I bought this off of uh, Amazon. Um, you can search it up, probably find it yourself, or you can use. Any, you want to like food grade stuff or stuff that's like pure. You don't want anything that could be contaminated that may affect your tank. Uh, some things I found useful was like a funnel. Probably good for any like DIY stuff that involves like any form of powder. And of course you want to have some of like the um, the measurement stuff, spoons. So for the for a lot of his, um, I want to say formulas that he has uh, posted on Reef to Reef, he does a lot of stuff in uh, I think a teaspoon. So... That's what I'm using. <clears throat> so when you're first starting out, you definitely want to dose uh, in smaller amounts and see how your tank reacts before, you know, upping that dose. Um, for me, I found out the perfect dose amount is I usually do two of these teaspoons uh, for five gallons of my auto top off. So I would totally recommend that when you're first starting out with ammonia dosing, you definitely want to dose by like hand. Um, Maybe even a doser you could consider it. Um, I guess the risk that comes with dosers is um, if for some reason they're kind of like stuck in the on position, then that's really like you're losing your tank if that goes like horribly wrong. But that's a super slim chance. Um, you know, it can't really go wrong with hand dosing unless you totally miscalculate. So make sure you're checking. Um, there's like calculators in there. Just make sure you're like checking over the stuff, making sure if you're in the U.S. you're using gallons, you know, other people use, I think, liters. But uh, yeah, I've done that in the past, and then I figured out, I kind of like did some math on the perfect amount to use inside of my uh, five, gallon, five gallon auto top off uh, bucket. Um, initially, I think I did too much, and then I like um, dabbled in to find like the perfect amount for the tank that would give me around like five to 10 uh, nitrates. So yeah, um, definitely don't want to smell this stuff. It has, it will definitely hit you. So all I do is I usually mix in like a little bit of, or I have a little bit of RODI water. And then I measure out two um, teaspoons of this uh, ammonia bicarbonate. Drop it in there. It will kind of like sizzle or whatever, but nothing bad. And yeah, simple as that. So I put in two teaspoons. And then I like to just close up the cap, <clears throat> shake it up a little bit. And then, although it seems like very uh, little, like, you know, this is at five gallons worth of stuff. I, I mix it in this little bottle, then I pour it into the uh, auto top off bucket. So then, like here, I like to fill up the rest with uh, some water. I'm gonna do this over the bucket so I don't spill any water out. Here real quick. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much my solution. And um, it's as easy as that, um, I don't, you know, I like to leave it out for maybe like 10 minutes or so, so it can fully dissolve. And then uh, it's pr pretty much ready to use. It dissolves really easily. And yeah, don't have any problems. Um, for those of you that are using like auto top off, um, or if you're trying the same approach as me, I like to kind of mix up the bucket too. So that, you know, maybe it just doesn't all sit at the bottom. But yeah, that's about it. That's all I'm doing for this part. And uh, we can talk about it more in uh, the tank update. All right, YouTube, let's start on the, uh, I guess the whole Thanksgiving tank update. So I guess the first noticeable change, if uh, you guys have been watching, 
is I recently got rid of that massive Zoroark right here. I was selling off a bunch of stuff in my tank, you know, fries of uh, this pink acro, a bunch of Zoas I have growing. Um, just to make some money back for like the holidays, it's always nice to make some money back for um, for that and of course the hobby too. So that was one thing. Um, in terms of all the other corals, I don't think I really got rid of much. I still have a lot. <clears throat> a lot of people were digging this uh, Wolverine Zoa, so I'll probably have to frag that up in the future. But as for now, I kind of like how it's looking. I like whenever they grow into like a little bunch like that. It's like a little nice dome. There's a saltwater molly coming to say hi, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to free up the space because I'm planning to um, probably like print a few of those like sand 3D uh, plugs. So I'll probably move like that massive frog spawn there in the front. Um, I'm hoping it does well with the light. We'll see. As time goes but to kind of fill this gap and I know like it won't uh, sting the hammers because I was also thinking about maybe doing torches right there too but I do have a lot of torches here on the back wall which you know I kind of like them on the back wall too and they really love the flow up in the this left side of the tank uh, I'll probably go into a little top-down view in a little bit with the little um, Probably what you call it. I have one of those underwater things I can use with my camera, which is pretty neat. But for those of you that haven't seen my tank in a while, you'll probably be surprised with uh, like how fast these four star digits are like growing in the tank. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, and you know, it's odd because back in my nano tank, they grew more of like that goldenrod pattern, more like of a, I guess like a branchy look. But in this tank, maybe under like radions or maybe the flow is just like really different. They've been growing more of an encrusting type, so that's pretty pretty interesting. Uh, here on Pikachu Acro, I do another top down, but this guy is like coloring up like halfway, but I guess it's like really hard to retain the colors. Um, you know, I really thought it was the lighting, so I noticed like the back side of I will show you like a top down a little bit. Um, the back side of this Acro is you can definitely see the yellow, but the front side. You can see here, like, it's shaded out a little bit, and it just doesn't have those colors. So what I did was I ended up moving uh, my lights forward a little bit. So I want to talk about the lights a little bit, and uh, kind of tell you guys what I did. So if you recall, I do have these um, AliExpress bars I mounted. So back then, I was uh, too lazy to figure out, like, this little um, piece that you, where you can adjust, like, the angle of the light. So what I did was, like, a little DI version. Uh, DIY version. I'm gonna turn up the brightness. So I installed these washers onto the front of the radions, which gave them like that natural, like um, I guess, like angle down. I mean, it's not like crazy, right? But it has that angle down. So you know that naturally made the bar a little bit more angled. But since I have that now, um, I've moved the light up a little bit, so the front of the tank is getting more light. And it did color up a little bit of the front, but I think um, this piece just really relies on my parameters too, compared to like the rest of the acros. So yeah, it's been a really sh big struggle trying to color up this guy for the longest time, because in the past I had like no problem. This guy was growing, his colors were amazing, but now he's just like one of the hardest acros to color up for some reason. But yeah, all the other uh, acros are retaining their colors pretty well. Um, I will say like the battle corals, um, even though they do retain their colors, they just aren't as fluffy as my other acros inside the tank. But you know, that's better than losing them. They are coloring a little bit back up. And that little one, um, I just ran out of frag plugs from this pink one. So I have that little one right there. Clownfish, they were spawning the other day and I actually checked at night with a flashlight and I saw the little baby fish. But you know, there's nothing I can do about it. They were just, uh, they were gone by the morning. Oh yeah, I forgot, oh man, I just barely missed them, but oh yeah, there he is. I did get that little cryptic grass right there. He's uh, really shy, so he's not a six line, but he's a cryptic. I love the way he moves like inside the rocks. He has like a very like staggered like movement. So it's pretty cool watching uh, him behave. 
But yeah, there's some possum rest. Uh, I guess they get. I was a little worried, but you get along fine. Possum rest doing possum rest things. He likes to just circle with his torch in the back. <laughs> like I kid you not. Like I think he spends a couple hours a day doing this. Like around that little backside. Um. Yeah, for some reason yesterday, my, I saw Water Molly, he was just stuck in that corner back there, so I'm not sure what happened there, but he's out and about today. Uh, Miyagi uh, Tort is growing really great for me. Definitely has more of that purple. You can see a lot better under the uh, the white lights I have during this time. Uh, I don't see the green as much inside the base of the uh, aggro, but it's starting to kind of like shade out itself, so I'm about to cut that guy down a little bit. It's just a pain because whenever I go cut these guys, um, these two rocks right here aren't like a part of this big rock work. I like try to glue them down, but they always like fall off. And every once in a while, I guess my fish runs into it and it falls off. So yeah, that's pretty annoying too. <clears throat> uh, so that torch in the back right there is a jester torch. Really nice. It's like splitting into three heads. Love the gold of the jesters. Like the gold and green is like a really nice one to have. Compared to that, this is the, the dragon tamer. Definitely gets a little bit bigger than this, but it's just not that time yet. And of course, I do have the uh, cotton candy torch. Um, yeah, this is this is a weird one. So I've been getting a lot of those. Uh, I, I forget how you spell them. I'm I'm gonna call them like Asala or whatever uh, flatworms. They're like super little tiny guys, but for some reason they love the the screen torch. And like they grow and like. Plague numbers, like I'm talking about, like maybe like 50 on this torch. So uh, even though they're they're like bothering it for sure, I can tell that they're bothering it, but it's not like actively eating away the torch. So I went to go dip them and revive the other day to kind of like relieve the head. And uh, one of the heads just started uh, brown jellying out, so I ended up fragging it. So I got rid of one head, and then I have two smaller frags in the sump. I might show here in a little bit. But yeah, there's that guy. Then I picked up another dragon tamer. It's splitting into a lot of heads, so I might keep him. Maybe frag him out a little bit in the future. It's really interesting. This, this uh, dragon tamer is more gold, whereas that one's like a more like a, a deeper gold with more green. But maybe that's just because it hasn't been in my tank for a while, and this is like the hellfire. Uh, yeah. And then to go more on the hammer garden. All the hammers doing great. I think my mag is actually running a little bit lower these days because um, for my Aqua Forest 1, 2, 3, um, I have more cal calcium and uh, alkalinity supplements compared to magnesium. So I'm trying to like run them to where, because um, I, I have one one of each left, but I have two extra alk and calc, er, yeah, calcium um, supplements. So I'm trying to kind of level them out so they're not like staggered. Here we have the exospheres. This one has been growing amazing for me. Um, covered this rock, started out with maybe like three polyps. Doing great. I think I might try to frag like a few singles for people. And so I'm a little bit cheaper. But it's, yeah, fragging is a little hard on like rocks with Zoas, but it's doable with a, like a little razor. Um, I used to have this, uh, this one's called the Mind Tricks. It's definitely not as, um, this has the same colors as it used to have in the past, but it was kind of like shaded over here under my like gaunies and I had like a frag rack in the front, so I moved it over here after I freed up some room. Uh, GMKs, I think there's like three big polyps on there, but I used to have like five, so you know, they're, they're notorious for being super slow, so nothing there. Uh, one thing I wanted to speak on is, um, I'm not sure like if my uh, bumblebee snails like just like disappeared. I haven't seen any to be honest. They, they like to hide like under the rock works and stuff, but I've had a massive explosion in these fermented snails. Like I'm talking about everywhere. Like you see them like I see that turf the brightness. Like under the rocks, dude, they're like everywhere. Under the rocks, um on corals, under corals on the backside. You know, especially your euphilia they're they always grow like near the base, so like this purple hammer has like a ton under it. So I probably killed off like the little spawning babies that were on the side. Speaking of that, you see the little uh, torch done there. And then the other spawn is back here. If you guys can see it, it's kind of hard getting this to focus right now for some reason. 
Uh, let me see if I can adjust it a little bit. Right there. Still tiny. Um, uh, after looking at the polyps, I want to say it's a hammer. So it might be that same hammer that's spawning. Um, although some do look like torch polyps, um, I do see some that have that hammer shape. So I'm going to guess it's a hammer. And then, yeah, you can kind of see them all over this back rock, too. Battling with a lot of turf algae these days, like that's way better than bulb algae because turf algae you just like kind of They just kind of peel off and it's really nice to it's kind of like satisfying to clean I'd rather have that over bulb any day So I do have a little bit of bulb algae left, but for the most part it's a uh, it's all in, like my sump But for the main display tank, I guess um, the fish don't really eat the turf algae But I think my cleanup crew does because I don't see really any on the rocks I tried to bring my pita crab up there one day and he was kind of like going at it, but he doesn't stay up there really. He kind of just falls back down. Uh, but yeah, it kind of it kind of wraps it up. Just trying to grow out stuff, making progress with acros. This one has made pretty good progress growing new branches. Um, still trying to level in my nutrient problem, but you know, that's going really great these days. And yeah, I'm just trying to find, you know, the small ways you can make money back in the reef. I'm not a coral farmer. Um, I've been watching uh, Alec, if you know him, on uh, YouTube. He's recently started posting a lot. He's uh, from the DFW area. He's like a coral farmer. It's like pretty crazy what he's grown there. But yeah, I'm just growing like, you know, just hobby stuff. And then update on uh, the sump. Let me see if I can turn off the pump real quick. Just have some stuff in the sump. Going out some zoas. There's Oscar, uh, my clownfish that my friend gifted me. So I don't want him to get beat up in the display tank, so I have him down there. But I think he's doing okay. So there's one of the torches that I was about that I had to frag out. Here's the other two. Uh, I probably need to get that guy off the zoos. I definitely don't want that. Let me fix that real quick. Yeah, that's bad. There you go. Yeah, for some reason that, um, that wall torch, uh, or I guess the correct term is uh, the Aussie torch, it, it lost a head, but it still has one. Um, I kept them down here because I was like dipping them, but I think they're okay now, so I might bring them up sometime in the future. So yeah, that kind of wraps up this video. Hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.